Hello guys, welcome to part 3 of this video. If you haven't watched parts 1 and 2, I will recommend you to go back and check those out first. The links are there in the description box. The next movie is a 2019 movie titled Section 375. As the name suggests, this movie is based on the infamous section of uh, IPC 375 which is about rape. Now I have done a detailed uh, movie review of this movie in my previous video and you can go check that out. I will drop a link in my description box as well. Now uh, just as a you know just for, for your uh, as a synopsis this movie again is a courtroom drama and it is based on it plays out the trial of a fake allegation of rape. Eventually, the defense lawyer is able to prove in the court that there are a lot of loopholes in the prosecution story and it he makes the judges ponder that it is in fact a case of fake rape allegation. However, the judges bow down to the immense media pressure that is created because it's a rich man who has been alleged to have committed the rape of a poor girl. Media puts in a lot of pressure on the judges as a result of which the judges choosing to apply the law literally decides to convict the accused. Again, anybody, whether a law student or a non-law person who is trying to get a better understanding of the scope of section 375 and how it all plays out on the element of consent, this movie is a good movie to start with. There's a host of legal issues and principle that this movie touches upon and it tries to analyze that through the depiction of the story. The first and foremost is the victim shaming ordinarily. Now this was also portrayed in the movie Pink and I think I probably missed that point when I was discussing Pink. So let me talk about this here. Now victim shaming is a big big problem when it comes to victims or survivors of sexual assault. The society stigmatizes them uh, and somehow tries to pin the blame of that entire uh, offense that takes place against them on the victim itself. Either it will be said that the victim was wearing something provocative or she was doing something or she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Somehow the society tries to play out against the victim when it comes to such cases. This is also depicted in the movie as to how the police as well as when the victim has to go through a medical examination before the case is produced in the trial court. Uh, the amount of embarrassment and that amount of awkwardness and the amount of trauma that the victim has to go through because she has to keep narrating that incident again and again. She has to take a lot of verbal abuse from the people involved in the investigation of the case that it becomes a very very traumatizing effect. One can probably think this to be the reason why a lot of cases of rape and sexual cases uh, go unreported because the victim is not brave enough to be able to handle the kind of stigma and the trauma that the justice system is going to put them through. The second thing that the movie focuses on is to show an actual trial, how a trial for a rape progresses, the kind of focus that they put on evidences, the forensic evidences, the manner in which forensic evidence is collected and how that is presented before the court and how the court sifts through the evidence deciding what is relevant and what is admissible. The movie also uh, challenges the professional ethics of a lawyer. In fact, Akshay Khanna, uh, who plays the defense lawyer, does, does say that as lawyers, you are supposed to remain detached emotionally from your uh, client's case. You are only supposed to be concerned with what your client is expecting out of you and you should not have any emotional investment in that case. I have done a detailed review on this film. Uh, in my previous video. So you can go and check out that video. I will be dropping the link in the description box. Lastly, this movie also focuses on how media trial or the pressure of media has the effect of swaying the case in a particular manner, even if it does not relate to justice. In the case like this, where it is proven or at least there is a justifiable doubt that the defense is able to put in the minds of the bench that this was not actually a case of non-consensual sex but it is very likely that this was a consensual sex a sexual relationship but because things did not go the way they were planned between the couple the women decided to bring in a case of rape so how this has an effect of the media coming in and you know pitting the public into two factions one because the perpetrator the alleged perpetrator is a rich person and the victim is a poor girl they tend to take sides and they've already declared the accused to be guilty of the 
offense it is as a result of that that the judges also try to play safe and they apply this literal rule of interpretation uh, one of the rules of statutory interpretation while they are deciding the case so they say that since the accused could not prove that consent was present therefore they are going to assume that the statements made by the victim are to be given paramount importance and that's also provided in the uh, evidence act the indian evidence act under section 113 therefore this movie is a good starting point for any law student or a non law person to improve their understanding of section 375 the next movie is guzarish now this is uh, this movie was released in the year 2010 so sorry for skipping the chronology this movie stars Hrithik Roshan and Aishwarya Rai in primary roles and this movie is centered around this debate ethical as well as legal that surrounds euthanasia. Now I know that this is not a technically a topic for a criminal law student or it does not fall under criminal law as such at least the part of euthanasia but yes to the effect to the to the extent that it goes on to have an impact on the validity of section 309 of IPC that punishes a person who tries to attempt to commit suicide, this movie does become relevant for that purpose. Now this movie shows the life story of a quadriplegic, a paralyzed person played by Hrithik Roshan who used to be a magician but because of a skit that he was presenting, something went wrong and he suffered from that injury. This movie tries to bring in a lot of important discussions that revolves around euthanasia. For example, he has his friend, uh, you know, doctor friend who's played by Suhail Seth and he keeps trying to convince this friend of him to give him that shot, that lethal shot that would help him end his life. And this friend, he is actually torn between this dilemma of being a good friend and, you know, reducing the suffering of his friend who is suffering because he believes his life has no quality and on the other hand he has this dilemma of a, of a physician, of a doctor who has to ensure that he does not do anything that goes against the interest of his patient. So this moral dilemma of a physician is well depicted in the movie. This movie also focuses on the validity of section 309 and why uh, the judge in the movie also eventually uh, dismisses the petition of the character played by Hrithik Roshan because they say that the written law of the country which is section 309 of IPC does not allow the euthanasia could be allowed. So as I said this movie is not technically uh, a criminal law criminal law movie but yes to the extent that it goes on to analyze the issue of euthanasia which came into light in 2018 with the decision of the Supreme Court in Aruna Shanbagh versus Union of India where the Supreme Court did finally allow passive euthanasia. The, the court was still not okay with the idea of allowing active, uh, active euthanasia because they had a feeling that that could be misused by the kith and kin of people who were in a vegetative state and who were trying to fight for getting rid of their life because they believed that the, the, the life that they were living was not a life of dignity. This movie also touches upon an issue of constitutional law. I will delve deep uh, in more detail in my uh, you know in my video based on constitutional law through films where i will be discussing this movie and the underlying concept in much more detail but just as a head start this movie does uh, engage a very very important debate about what do you mean by right to life do you can you say that right to life is also equal to right to die and also can you say that right to life is a mere right to a life or does it also include right to a dignified life the next movie is called Court, rightfully so. It's a 2014 released movie. It's the only movie in my list which is a regional movie. This was a Marathi movie released in 2014 and it shows the story of how a aging folk singer is fighting a case in a sessions court in Mumbai. Now probably one of the only movies that I could not get my you know get a hold on I couldn't watch the entire movie I have watched snippets of the movie as well as the trailer and it is the trailer in, in itself is very riveting and very heart rendering so whatever little I could gather on this movie if you know anything else about the movie that I seemed to miss out do leave a comment down below 
but based on my understanding i realized that this movie touches upon certain important aspects of a student of criminal law first and foremost now this could be a point common for our indian legal system or judicial system as such it does bring forth the idea of this huge pendency of cases and how because of that a common man has to suffer for long when they're trying to get justice in their case so if something could be done about that it definitely will improve the perception of justice will improve the perception of courts and judiciary in the minds of a common man it also harbors the this this very important principle of law which says justice delayed is justice denied if you're getting justice way after when you wanted it to happen is just this justice is not going to serve any purpose it also uh, you know elaborates on another important principle of law that your primacy should be focusing on securing justice for the party rather than fulfilling the procedure that is laid down in the exact verbatim form the procedure was made to facilitate the process of justice it's not going to act as an antithesis to stop somebody from able to secure justice in the court so one should never give importance over and above the justice to that of legal procedure that is laid down thirdly this also talks about the value and the immense need that is there to have some standards for professional training of lawyers now there are various movies uh, you know where the protagonist usually the hero starts off as something who's callous casual in fact both jolly llb movie franchises uh, you know show their main characters like that who are casual about their job in the beginning and then gradually something happens because of which they become serious but this is actually a sad reality of our uh, you know our lawyer fraternity of uh, the bar council not being able to lay down strict rules that they are able to implement when it comes to professional etiquettes and trainings of lawyers there are many lawyers that are there who do not have any knack of how to go about fighting the case how to go about arguing in a case how to do the filing properly as a result of which the common man which uh, you know which uh, which goes on to these lawyers for securing any kind of legal help ends up being in a soup because of the inefficiency and the lack of formal professional training that these lawyers should be having bar council should do something about it they should have certain quality assurance standards or at least some criteria uh, until that criteria is met a lawyer should not be allowed to practice in any courts in india finally we reach the end of the list is article 15 this 2019 released movie is a milestone in itself because it brings to light a very very important and yet ignored facet of our indian constitution which is article 15 now essentially this movie is a good case study for understanding constitutional law which i will be doing in my later videos but i wanted this to be my last movie one because it's a recent movie legal movie that i saw and secondly even though it could not have a very direct uh, relationship to principles of criminal law as such it does show two very important points one is the access to justice and how a person of poor means specifically if a person belongs to a lower caste how that becomes a prejudice against him and how that will stop in in, in uh, stop him in able to secure justice for himself and his family secondly on the converse it also builds on the presumption that our society our police our executive our law also favors the high and the mighty so if you are a person of the high caste and something happens in a village and it is very very clear that you did in fact commit that offense the police is not even going to touch you because they are not going to in fact even have a presumption that you may have committed that offense so this is the first thing that the movie focuses on and secondly it does show the unfortunate state of affairs when it comes to the preliminary investigation of police and the eventual investigation that leads to the filing of the case in the court this movie obviously because the movie uh, the main protagonist is a police officer so you had to show something good about the police force as well but it does start off with the immense prejudice and hate or rather disdain that people of the lower caste uh, have to suffer because uh, of the higher caste people thinking 
against them and believing them that they do not deserve a chance at life the same way a person of higher caste would expect to be. Through this list, I have strived to bring various facets of criminal law and how they've been portrayed in the movies for your understanding. Now, ordinarily, law students study IPC in their second year and they study criminal procedural code in their third years. So until then, this, these movies can be a good starting point for you to identify these various principles of criminal law which are hidden in the movie. So the next time you watch any of these movies or you get an, get an opportunity to do so, probably go on to identify the points that I've just mentioned. Therefore, the actual time when you're getting down to study criminal law, you will be able to relate to the criminal law in a much more effective manner. Secondly, you also, uh, in fact, you can consider a lot of movies that were there in my list were based on actual cases. For example, Rustam, which was based on K.M. Nanavati case or No One Killed Jessica, which was based on the actual Jessica Lal murder case or Talwar, which was based on the Arushi Talwar case. Studying these movies, studying these cases through these movies can actually serve almost the same purpose as that of studying cases or judgments, which we call, call as precedents in, uh, you know, in the terminology of law. So studying these cases and understanding them, relating to them through these movies will serve a double purpose of not only preparing you and clarifying your principles of criminal law, but also you will be you will not be required to repeat these cases again since you've already watched the movies these will be better imprinted in your mind and you will be able to recall them in a much much better manner at any point of time whether as a student of law or as a person who's practicing criminal law as you may have realized through these movies not only we decipher principles uh, of criminal law and how they're applied but a lot of times we also sadly get to know how they're misapplied or abused in the eyes of law i hope you like this video enjoyed the information that i passed on please comment down below if you believe i missed out any movies worth mentioning and i will surely incorporate them in my next couple of videos i also plan to do a hollywood version of this list where i will be analyzing hollywood classics based on principles of various laws for example criminal law etc do comment down below if you want to watch that series also stay tuned for my detailed series on criminal law where I shall be segregating all these movies that I summarily mentioned today and I will be clubbing them under common heads of criminal law and I will be discussing the interpretation and application of those laws through the medium of these films. Until next time, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.